Thank you very much for a kind introduction. So it's a joint work with uh, Bruno Blanchet and uh, Véronique Cortier. So as you all know, designing a security uh, protocol is difficult as we need to uh, secure many aspects from hardware, uh, cryptographic primitive that you're using, and of course the protocol itself. So this work uh, only focuses on the protocol aspects and in particular the automated verification uh, to guarantee the absence of logical flaws. So we place ourselves within the mod symbolic model called Dolavier model in which uh, attackers control the network so they can intercept message, read and uh, write messages over the network, but they cannot break the cryptography or use side channel. So we verify a wide range of security properties going from the more classical one, uh, authentications, uh, secrecy, to privacy type properties like anonymity, vote privacy, and uninkability, and of course the list is not exhaustive. So why ProVerif? So ProVerif is a state-of-the-art uh, automated uh, prover. So it's a mature tool as it's um, last year was the 20th birthday of, uh, of ProVerif. So it's uh, fairly, used to, fairly easy to use, especially at the beginner, as it is a really a push down button tool. And it has quite a large community, so at least uh, 140 paper uh, used it. Of course, it's probably not also exhaustive because we, uh, Bruno, uh, list that by hand, and more than uh, a thousand uh, paper cited uh, the tools. It's also very expressive and very efficient, as usually on uh, run in the mill case study, it takes about a minute or, or so to, to verify. But of course, it's not perfect, uh, as the problem of verifying uh, cryptographic protocols is undecidable in general, so the tool may not terminate, and it may also yield some false attacks, so we'll explain a bit more why later on. And it's specifically the case in the class of protocol that use global memory that we usually call stateful protocols, where you, you need uh, typically to store information through several sessions. So uh, I said it was efficient, like a minute or so in, in small examples, but in large case studies, like in the noise protocol framework or TLS uh, on the paper in 2016, it can take up to days and even weeks to verify, so there's room for improvement here. So what does Proverif looks like as a user uh, perspective? So you start usually by ex expressing uh, the cryptographic primitive you're going to use in your protocol and the algebraic properties using either equational theory or rewriting systems. And you express the behavior of the participants of your protocol through a process algebra that comes from the applied pi calculus, which is an extension of the pi calculus with cryptographic uh, for, for, for crypto. Then you can express your security query. Uh, here it's a correspondence query uh, at the bottom, and also the scenario in which you want everything to be verified. So it can handle unbounded number of sessions, hence usually the, the undecidability. So how does it work internally? Well, Proverif takes the, the, proce the, the process you gave as an input as well as the queries, and it uh, translates that into a set of own clauses. So own clauses are typically a logical uh, statement for sort of logic that says, if my hypothesis holds, then my conclusion necessarily uh, is true. Uh, then after it translated this protocol into a set of own clauses, it applies a saturation which uh, corresponds to taking two, set, two own clauses from your uh, current set of clauses, combine them through resolution, and then add this newly generated clause into the set. You repeat this process until a fixed point is reached, and once your fixed point is reached, this is the set that you obtain is the saturated set. And then Proverif verifies the query on this set of uh, uh, saturated uh, own clauses. So the limitation of Proverif, in particular the false attacks and non-termination, comes mostly on the side of the false attacks from the translation from the protocol to the set of own clauses. This is where we lose some precision from the semantic of the WU model to what Proverif is able to prove. And in terms of uh, non-termination, well, most of it is due to the saturation of own clauses, which, when it does terminate, still takes about 95% I mean, of the computation time of Proverif. So I put 95%, this is average case, because of course it depends on your case study. 
So how did we uh, went along to tackle those two problems? So first, it was one of the uh, uh, main achievement of this paper is to introduce lemmas, axiom, and restriction inside Proverif. So originally Proverif, typically if you, you, can, if you can write several queries if you want, but it mm, tackled them completely independently. Okay. Here on the other hand, when you write a lemma, it, which, which is also a correspondence query, Proverif will first try to prove it as if, as if it was a normal query. And then the new thing is that once he's able to prove it, it will try to reuse the statement inside the proof of the next query, of the next lemma, or your main queries. And it does that uh, for every lemma that you uh, put as input. Axioms are typically lemmas that Proverif does not try to prove, so it assumes that it is true as an axiom. So it's uh, the user job to ensure that the axioms are correct. And it's typically very useful if you have a hand proof on the axiom on your side, or in particular to handle stateful protocol. Uh, if you can, re this is how we re-inject some, some of the precision that were lost during the translation from the protocol to the own clauses by adding uh, axiom that mm, fit the, 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 the semantic of the Dolevio model. And once all the, all the lemmas are proved, Proverif try to uh, prove the main query using all the lemmas and all the axiom that he managed to emit. So those lemmas are typically applied within the saturation procedure uh, that I mentioned earlier. So that was the main, uh, the, one of the main work uh, that we did in this paper, but we kind of didn't stop there because as I mentioned, Proverif is 20 years old and some part of the algorithm that were implemented well, are 20 years old. And in the meantime, people worked on own clauses, and so there was a bunch of literature that uh, we looked at and was quite useful uh, to see how can we improve the tool, make it more efficient. And so we went over the, the full code of Proverif and uh, improved many aspects of it, whether from the simplification of clause, the subsumption of clauses, the translation from process to, to clauses, also the resolution, the resaturation procedure, and, and so on. So I will show you in a later slide how those improvements impacted the verification time. And I was also gonna describe a bit more about the subsumption. But we also uh, improved the expressivity of Proverif by first adding natural numbers. So you can actually now uh, use natural numbers and do operation like plus and, and subtraction uh, that is very useful to describe, for example, counters that are uh, used quite often in uh, in stateful protocols. Of course, we don't allow everything about natural numbers, so you're not allowed to do multiplication on division, but still. We also uh, added temporal queries and improved the way Proverif verifies them to further reduce the number of false attacks. So, let me talk a bit more about the subsumption of clauses. So as I mentioned in the saturation, uh, Proverif takes two clauses, combines them to resolution, and then adds the new clause inside the current set and it repeats. But if you do that naively, then it will never terminate. It will always go into a loop. So one of the main things that Proverif does is that before adding this newly generated clause into the set, it will try to see if this clause is not already implied by another existing one or subsumed. So a bit more formally, we say that a clause H gives C subsumes uh, another one, H prime C prime, if uh, this later clause is an instance of the first one. So checking that uh, a clause subsumes another, it's an NP hard problem. So it's it's well, it's costly in terms of uh, verifying. And the problem is that we do that for every clause that are generated, and even when the clause is generated and we need to add it, we also try to remove all the clause from the current set of, of uh, own clauses that are subsumed by the new one. So we do this operation often, maybe really often, and in fact, just the subsumption uh, function corresponds to about 80% of the time in average of uh, Proverif. So what we looked at is we look at a paper of, uh, by Schulz in 2013 that introduced the notion of feature vertex indexing. And here the idea is, is fairly simple. It's say, okay, instead of applying always the subsumption, first let's try to find uh, a small function f that uh, computes some element on your clause, like for example the number of symbols in it. 
And this function should satisfy the following property. It says, okay, if H, uh, the clause HC subsumes the, the clause H prime C prime, then the application of F on HC should be smaller than the application of F on H prime C prime. And so what we can do now is that instead of always applying the NP hard problem on it, is that we first compute on the own clauses the function F, check if the equality holds. If it doesn't hold, then we don't even need to apply the uh, NPR problem because we know that the, the test will always fail. And just this simple idea, in fact, once you organize your clause uh, as a tree indexed by the feature value, provide the U speed up in Prevail. So as I mentioned, that I would give you a bit of an idea of how the different uh, improvement fare in, in practice, so we took uh, case study from the literature, so it's not, it's really case study from different papers, that we knew took a long time, uh, according to the author, and notice that the, the scale here is logarithmic. So for instance, on the noise, so here A, B, C, and D is the different optimization that we did, and so every time uh, the, the scale says that at the beginning it's, we only use A, then it's the Bs, meaning that we use the optimization A and B, and so on and so forth. Okay. And so for instance, in the noise uh, framework protocol, we went from one week of verification time to 20 minutes. So it's about 500 uh, times speed up. Notice that all optimization do not scale the same way. They always optimize, they always make it faster, but they do not always scale the same way depending on the case study. So for example, in the noise shuttle uh, protocol, which uh, yield to a 900 times faster speed up of the verification time, uh, most of the speed gain were from the translation of uh, protocol to own clauses. So to validate our the expressivity results, we also looked at a uh, paper from the literature and look at all the files that were given some query where probably yield cannot be proved, meaning it was not able to say yes or no to the, to the feature, to the query. But we also look at unpublished protocol. So why unpublished? Because, well, usually we tend to publish uh, protocols that are verified by Provave, and people tend to not publish their file that doesn't work. On the other hand, what they do, which is very nice for us, is that they send us their file saying like, oh, I don't manage to make my protocol work, so it's Provave, can you help us? So we have a huge bunch of, uh, uh, of examples uh, where the probably were not able to prove, uh, and we also apply our results on this by activing, uh, activating uh, some of the new feature that we introduced. And in, overall, uh, in total, we are on the um, one we um, tried, we gain about 40 to 50 uh, new queries that were, uh, were probably either failed to prove or was not terminating and now was able to give a, a positive or a negative result. More recently, we also applied uh, use Proverif in uh, a big case study of TLS plus an extension of, uh, of encrypted client cello, where we prove privacy, confidentiality, authentication, and integrity goals. Uh, so that paper was, uh, will be published uh, this year. And on this one, we re heavily relied on the axioms and lemmas that I, I mentioned. So what's next for Proverif? So that was the, the state, let's say, uh, uh, of uh, Proverif 2. And with this paper, we definitely did much better in terms of expressivity and, and efficiency. So I didn't put completely remove the, the gray, it's still gray because of course it's undecidable, so we, it, there will always be a case where it does not terminate or yields or false attacks. But we still do much better in terms of expressivity. However, uh, there's still some things that we are still not able to do and we're working on it. Like for example, some cryptographic uh, primitives are missing. Uh, and I'm thinking for example of uh, primitive using abelian groups, uh, XOR. And also in terms of efficiency, now that Proverif generates closes much faster, we ended up having not a time problem, but a memory problem. And on, for example, on the my example of uh, TLS with uh, ECH, we kind of blow up the memory of our server after 200 and 300 gigabytes. Uh, server was like, oop, stop, I stop. So we are currently working on to make this a bit better. And finally, I put now the easy to use in orange because now that we have many feature, 
additional ones. Uh, it's a bit harder to, as a user, to understand how to properly use the lemmas and axiom, which feature to activate or not. So we are trying to see how we can uh, more automatically detect or guide the user how to, which feature to use in which cases. Thank you very much for your attention. If, if you have any question, uh, uh, go ahead and feel free to visit the website of, uh, of the tool. Uh, there's a mailing list uh, and feel free to send us. Um, we are very happy if you send us all your files that do not work for us, it's gold. So go ahead. Awesome, thank you very much, Vincent, for uh, your awesome um, presentation and also the work. I know, again, the workload is huge. So uh, let's take uh, questions from uh, the on-site audience. First of all, thank you for developing such a fantastic tool. Uh, I actually wanted to ask whether you could give us any intuition for the definition of this feature function that allows you to accelerate subsumption checks. The feature, the the feature functions. Yeah, exactly. You said the condition that the function needs to meet, but what what features do you actually use? Oh, so uh, in terms of feature, you have, for instance, uh, but I mentioned the number of uh, symbols. So you can, for each symbols, you can count the number of symbols in one clause and symbol in the other clause. And typically, if the the one that you try to subsume is smaller than the one that is supposed to be, do the subsuming, then you already know that here it's not working. You can do the same with the def of the symbols within the terms. Uh, you also have uh, the def in terms of inside the terms, but also their, the the wife, where the placement of the symbol within the within the terms themselves. So it's all those kind of a small. Uh, small property that can easily compute by just doing one uh, a linear, going linearly through your clause, so it's much, mas much faster. Got you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, in, in the interest of time, we're not taking any more questions. Um, let's, let's welcome, uh, well, let's thank the speaker and uh, get ready for the next talk. Thank you very much. Thank you.